Hi, I'm Andres de Olenda. I am a poet, I am a writer, and an advocate for special needs children. My journey as a poet and a writer started off at a very young age. I would use poetry as a form of expression, self-expression, and truly just understanding my internal reality. And I could never quite call myself a poet. I just didn't feel that I actually fit, right? I would compare myself to other poets and novelists, you know, like the likes of Maya Angelou, and I would just feel that, you know, maybe my poetry isn't just right. You know, I saw it as, you know, another form of journaling, where most people, you know, journal, you know, in the diary. For me, journaling was poetic, right? But to call myself a poet and a writer and actually, you know, realize within myself that I had the talent for it, really took a lot of self-discovery. So if you are on a journey of self-discovery and really trying to, you know, make sense of this talent, I hope that these five things can help you along your journey. And so as a poet, here are five things a poet needs to know to create powerful, beautiful, and evocative poetry. At number one, personality. Art is such a beautiful form of expression, of self-expression especially, and so I believe it is important for your poetry to reflect your personality, who you are as a person, and truly dive into, you know, you, right? Poetry is about you. Poetry is about, it can be about, you know, whatever your experiences are in life. As long as your poetry reflects who you are as a person, it will always be powerful. And at number two, we have unique. What makes you stand out? I believe that the minute you try to mimic the work of others, you essentially lose the element of surprise. Allow the work of others, other poets, inspire you rather than direct your craft. Your craft is your own. So be yourself and let your work speak for itself. And at number three, we have charisma. And in line with that is delivery, right? So whatever medium you choose to use, whether it is spoken poetry or written poetry, your medium needs to reflect who you are and the message you're delivering to your audience. And so a very key aspect of that is delivery. And by delivery, I refer to the tone of your poetry, the mood of your poetry, the rhythm of your poetry, because there are several writers and poets in the world but the way in which you deliver your poetry will never quite resemble that of another poet. At number four, we have advocacy. Start by asking yourself, what do I stand for? What is your message? What am I trying to convey through my poetry? And the reason why advocacy is important because it really informs your poetry, it really informs you know, what you want your audience to take out of your poetry. And the minute you can answer this question, very often the answer to those questions align with your advocacy. So ask yourself why. Ask yourself, what am I trying to convey? Ask yourself, you know, what do I stand for? What message do I want to bring to the world that I want them to take from my poetry? At number five, and my favorite one of all, is creativity. And to explain this, I'd like to use the analogy of a painter. So if you're familiar with painting, or if you've seen a painter, you know that a painter usually has several different brushes. And brushes differ in density, so they can range from thick to thin. And the manner in which a painter uses these brushes forms a type of painting that's gonna be created, right? And so, from a poet perspective, your, your paintbrush is your words, how you use your words, how you weld them together. You know, the manner in which, you know, you use them informs the rhythm of your poetry, the mood of your poetry. So be creative with your words. Be creative with your poetry. Use it wisely. It can be your best friend. Trust me.